How is the tour so far? Really good, yeah, really good. We, um, we haven't been to Europe uh, since before the pandemic, so getting to come back uh, now, you know, it's been three years. It just feels amazing to be back and playing in front of everyone, you know. All right, uh, the best show so far? Um, the best show so far were probably um, Oslo and Stockholm, okay. which was uh, strange because they were uh, two of the places that we haven't been to barely at all. Mm -hmm. um, so it was, it was nice to come to play to some new places and play to people that have never seen us and, and the rooms be really energetic and, and exciting. So, yeah. All right. You know, your songs for me really often sound like uh, the result of a really good jam sessions. Okay. And I'm curious if it is like that or maybe you create your music, your records in a different way and you can tell us yeah, what this yeah. one is. Um, so we haven't written songs um, traditionally like in a room together playing our instruments in quite a long time. We've been... Um, we tend to write in a studio environment, so we'll write at the computer and we'll, um, we'll come up with a musical idea and then we'll, we'll flesh it out together, you know, by programming some drums and, and laying down some bass. And then when we have an idea, like a musical idea that we really like, that everyone's really vibing on, um, then Rob and Matt will take that idea away and they'll work on vocals for it for, you know, a few days. And if after those few days they come back and they've got some great ideas if there's a chorus in there if there's a chorus that we think is awesome then we'll commit to making that a proper song and writing right. it fully so we haven't written in a kind of jam session yeah. environment for a long time but we do still write together just in in a different way okay it's always interesting for me how you know how artists create their music because there's such a you know many ways yeah there's so many that. ways and everyone's everyone's different yeah uh, you played a lot of the tours as a supporting act mm. and how it feels now when you're playing you know headline and co-headline shows across the europe i've seen uh, also a really big arena shows uh, coming this year in uk yeah and how does it feel um, it's awesome. I mean, we love support tours. You know, it's, it's a very different vibe when you're supporting a bigger band because you're kind of going out there, um, like having to prove yourself in front of new people. So that's almost like a completely different challenge to going out and headlining mm -hmm. and playing in front of people who have never seen you before as a support band is, um, is something we really enjoy because we love that look on people's faces where they're like, oh, whoa, this isn't what I thought they were going to sound like or, you know, that, that kind of vibe. Um, but getting to come back as a headliner and, and getting to play like a longer set with more songs that aren't just the singles, you know, the mm. album tracks yeah. and some of those deeper cuts, um, that's really awesome as well because there's songs um, that we'd never play on a support show. So there's a song on our new album called Anaheim, mm -hmm. which is kind of like a more slow yes. building song. Um, and it's only really in the kind of headline environment yeah. that you can give those songs mm -hmm. the time, you know, to really, you know, blossom. Um, and so yeah, headlining now in Europe has been awesome to get to play all those kind of songs and people, you know, know them, they know our catalogue and they can relate to us in that way. So. Yeah, because you know, when you play as a support, you have to play, you know, five, six bangers to buy these people, yeah, right? Yeah. And I'm curious, is it like that, that when you play as a support, that you feel like, okay, we've got uh, 50 new fans right now. Is it something like that? Yeah, it does feel like it feels like you have to go in and or one thousand maybe. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, you never know how many you've gained by the end of it. You get a feeling for how it went, but it does always feel like yeah, you have to go in and play your five like loudest, fastest songs to grab people's attention. You know, you can't be too indulgent. Um, yeah, yeah. You played uh, as a support with with bands like Bring the Horizon. Mm -hmm. Uh, five Seconds of Summer, Mike Shinoda and a lot more. And now the band like Papa Roach supports you, by the way. <laughs> and uh, But how, you, how do you remember all these artists that you toured with and which tour was the best so far? Wow. Um, so yeah, we've done lots of supports. I think probably a couple of our favorite supports, um, Mike Shinoda was a really big one because we did maybe two or three tours with Mike 
in one year. Um, we did Europe with him and then we did Asia and we did the US. Um, and that was really special for us because Linkin Park were like our favourite band growing yeah, up. Of course. Um, and getting to um, spend that much time with, with someone who's been so influential and who's such a nice guy, um, that was like really special. And that particular tour where Mike was playing his, his solo record, which was very much about um, you know, that, that whole period immediately after Chester had died, mm. um, all the fans that were coming to those shows to see him, it was like, it, it, they were very special shows. There was like a, a connection in those shows between the artist and the crowd that you don't get to see that of often. Um, and so being a part of that tour was, yeah, it was amazing. Yeah. Okay, um, I think now it's gonna be interesting because I'm curious, are we living in good times or bad times for the rock bands now? And how's your perspective for that? Is it hard or maybe easy? Like, okay, we, we just have to release one album for a few years, yeah, yeah. do some tours and we're fine. We, we have a good life. How is it? From your perspective it's definitely um i think it is a tough time for rock you know you know people always say oh it's hard hard for rock bands right now and i think one of the things that, that does make it hard is rock as a genre has always centered around the album you know it's the album it's always the album um and therefore bands would go away they'd write a record they tour it for two years and then they'd go away for two years and write another one. Yeah. And in, in the current climate of how people ingest music so fast, you can't really afford to do that as a band anymore. You can't afford to disappear for two years and write a record because people lose interest, you know, they, yes. they forget. But also as a band, you can't afford not to be on the road because being on the road is the only way that you can actually have a, you know, a life and make yes. enough money to survive. Um, so yeah, it is a tough time and I think you just kind of have to, uh, as a band, adapt and still stay true to what you want to do and the music you want to make, but find a way to make it work within the current climate. Um, and, you know, coming back after a pandemic when no one's been able to tour for so long, um, I think bands are just grateful that we can still be on the road and we can still play shows and we can yeah. still, you know, be in front of people. So it's, it's, it's a great time for music in that respect. It's awesome that we're able to be back out here and yeah. doing it. But it is also, yeah, it, it, it is difficult that for bands. while being on concerts. But you're still releasing an albums uh, because there's something like, you know, a lot of artists just focuses on the singles mm. now to, you know, for the people to, you know, don't forget about, about them. Yeah, yeah. But... For me personally, releasing albums is a great traditional way that yeah. I'm used to, and then it's the tour. Yeah, I'm the same. I love albums. Yeah. I love uh, I love vinyl. I love yeah. the physical thing. I love you know you have such attachment to albums that you lose that if songs just become thrown out there all the time into the ether. I like I like it when a song has somewhere that it lives. I like yeah. it to live on that album and that album to be a special physical thing yeah. and. Uh, Okay, so maybe how do you listen to music? Because, you know, now we're living in the times of streaming. And I'm curious if, uh, if you're just stream songs or maybe you have some rituals like you're sitting and, you know, putting your vinyl. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm old school. I, I do that. I like to, um, I like to sit and I, I listen to a lot of vinyl. I've got a big collection and I find that process very rewarding like you know making time for music um but if i'm just around the house and i might be cooking or, or you know cleaning or whatever um then i will you know stream normally playlists i tend to if i find a new artist that i do like i'll always try and stream the album though i'll go and check out the whole catalog of work okay. um and then if i really like the album then i'll go and buy it on vinyl <laughs> okay um do you have something like pre-show rituals or something like that before the shows? Um, so we we normally like it depends on the uh, on the tour. If we have a dressing room and we're all together, um, then we would normally have a playlist on, and we have certain songs that would get us kind of hyped up and excited. Okay. Um, and 
but sometimes if you know you're on like a bus and there isn't too much of a dressing room everyone kind of gets scattered and so you're not like together until just before you get on stage um but yeah we don't have any kind of uh we don't like do a special handshake or anything like that <laughs> okay uh with the with the amazing things uh, album you you reached a number one in uk which is amazing and how do you feel about that was that something special for you as a band yeah that was, that was very special it's always been um like one of those big kind of milestones that you look at and you think wouldn't yeah. that be great to get a number one album um and it's also the kind of thing that um like being in a band so many of the things that you do like your parents don't understand you know like i'll tell my parents oh we're playing this festival in france we're playing this this and then they're like oh cool cool <laughs> but then you go oh we've got a number one album they can they get that they're like yeah. oh wow <laughs> yeah. so yeah it was awesome to uh, to get that and um it was kind of the culmination of like our, we've been building our fan base for like so many years just playing live yeah. um and that moment to to get a number one album where all the fans rally together and and they get you there um it just felt like a really special moment for us and all our fans that had been part of the journey to make it happen so yeah, yeah it's it's, for me i think it's a really special thing because you know bands like bring the horizon reached their first number one after a lot of years mm. i think with amo in uh, 2019 so yeah, yeah i think it's really special uh, i'm curious because i really like the song come out to like yeah and i'm curious uh, about the background of the song <laughs> um, was there some some people trying to convince you to to go to the states uh yeah. to do career here stuff like that yeah i mean at, at that point when we wrote come out to la um throughout a lot of technology actually like our mindset was quite um like not angry but just we were feeling quite gritty about everything and you know we 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 did have people that were saying you know you should come out come out here and write with our guys out here you, should, you know come to the Play states the shows. yeah exactly and we were just kind of tongue in cheek we were in a session in the uk <laughs> just and we were kind of you know just throwing it around and and Matt came up with the the lyric on the spot he was like come out to la write a few shows and it was, it was all kind of wow that's actually quite good and yeah. so yeah it rolled yeah off the tongue and it turned out uh, for a great song there you go yeah <laughs> uh but in, maybe in the future is there a plan to take over the states market or you're just good in europe and uk i mean we we'd always um love to spread our music as far as we can and we we've toured the states a lot at this point um we'd love to you know have a a, a career that could take us around everywhere you know to do the uk and europe and the states because we love being out there um so yeah i mean when we never specifically say yeah we're trying to you know break the states yeah. but we you know it'd be amazing to break the states if we could and if if enough people over there like our music like you know it's gone the way it's gone in the uk and in europe then that would be amazing we'd be very very happy okay that's all thank yeah. you so much thank for you. for a great conversation and have a great show tonight and the rest of the tour thank you so all much the best. awesome thank you so much